So you want to know how someone with nearly 600,000 subscribers is able to create their YouTube videos from start to finish? Well, you're in luck because I'm going to share my entire YouTube process that has helped me create over 200 videos on the platform that have generated over 30 million views. Let's dive into it. All right, let's talk about the first step of my YouTube process, and that is choosing my video topics. Now, there are different ways that I like to approach it. The first way is I usually keep a running tab on the competitors in my niche, and here and there, I'll creep their channels and filter their videos from most popular to least popular to see topics that have worked historically well for them. Not only this, I will then look at their most recently uploaded videos, and I kind of check out which videos are doing well for them, and then I take those same topics. Now, where I draw the line is I don't really watch their videos because because I want to keep the creative integrity that I have for my videos. So that's just basically where you kind of draw the line between inspiration and imitation. Now, another thing that you can do is when you're going into your creator studio, you can also look at the specific channels data wise that your viewers are also watching. So you might think that certain people are your competitors, but you would be really surprised once you look at the data who your actual competitors are. Not only this, if you go down a little bit, you can also see the specific videos that your viewers are also watching and that serves as really great content ideas as well. Not only this, I'll time and time again go onto my Instagram and pull my audience and specifically ask people what videos they would like to see from me and from there I usually cherry pick the videos that seem the most interesting to create and I will go onto YouTube and I'll look at the topic itself. I usually evaluate whether I'm going to pursue a topic based on how many views that video has compared to the amount of subscribers that creator has. So for instance in this example this video has a lot of views compared to the amount of subscribers that the creator has, which tells me that this video is driving the growth of their channel. These are really great low hanging fruit opportunities that you can capitalize on when you are doing research for your content topics. Now, once I have an idea of what video topics I want to do, the next step is to actually flesh out these video topics in depth by planning them out. And what I like to use is Notion to do this. I actually created a Notion dashboard to plan out all of my social media content, including YouTube. And if you want a link to that resource, then you can just click the link in my description box below to check it out. But essentially, I will map out all the content ideas in one column where it's basically my video topics. And then I'll start cherry picking which videos I am most interested in actually filming and actually scripting out. I'll then move the ones that I'm interested in under the scripting column and then I start scripting my videos. Now scripting can come in different forms. You could do a bullet point form and usually I do bullet point form for videos where I know like the back of my hand it's really easy for me and I just don't really need a script for. However there are also some videos where I do want to flesh out in depth and I will do that if necessary and I believe that there is no right or wrong way. There's only a right or wrong way for you. So really just pick the scripting style that works best that makes you feel most comfortable when filming and later on we're going to talk more about how I film my videos and how I reference my scripts. At the same time though, while there is no right or wrong way, depending on if you want to bullet point your videos or flesh them out in depth, there is a strategic way to structure your videos to get more watch time and to get more view duration. And so if you want to learn how to script your videos strategically, then make sure you click the link in my description box to access my scripting vault for YouTube that includes all the different strategies that you can implement to increase watch time for your videos. Now, once I finish scripting my videos inside my Notion dashboard, the next thing that I'll do is I'll start organizing my video topics and start sorting them by upload date. This allows me to organize when I'm going to be uploading each video and the order that I'll be filming the videos in. Once that's done, I'll then move the videos over to the filming section of my dashboard, which indicates that this video is now ready to film. Now moving on to the next step of my YouTube process and that is prepping for filming. So the first thing that I do is I open up my calendar and I start time blocking when I'm about to film. Usually I like to film on Thursdays and Friday afternoons and so I usually block that off so no one can book meetings in with me and my team also knows that I'm gonna be filming during that time period. The next thing that I also do is I sit down and I start reviewing the scripts that I have prepared for my filming day. Usually in a day I might film one to two videos and so I like to review the script beforehand so I know what I'm doing. Now, another thing too is I always make sure before I start filming that all of my batteries are fully charged. I use the Sony ZV-1 and sometimes the battery ends up dying while I'm filming and so I always make sure that I have backups. The worst thing that can happen is when you're filming and your camera dies and you have no backup batteries and that completely derails your entire filming flow. 
Once all of that is done, I then move up to the washroom, do my makeup, and then I start setting up my camera on the area that I want to start filming in. In addition to this, a really important thing that I make sure I have while I'm filming is my laptop. My laptop is what's going to have my script and I always keep my laptop nearby because while I'm filming, I typically refer back to my script because I don't memorize everything and I need to make sure I have a reference point. And later on, I'll show you my exact filming strategy so that you can use it for yourself, especially if you're worried about remembering what to say. Now, before I hit record and film, one of the most important things that I need to do that I often forget doing is take the thumbnail picture. Now, a hack that I like to do is I like to sit down, hit record, and I actually do a video of me doing multiple different poses that I can later screenshot so that I can create the thumbnail with. Now, you can create the thumbnail by either taking the screenshot, uploading it to Canva, removing the background, and editing it, or you can outsource this to a graphic designer or a thumbnail designer on on Upwork. There are tons of people on Upwork that create YouTube thumbnails. And actually for a very long time, a lot of my thumbnails are actually created by designers on Upwork. Now moving on to the next step of my YouTube process, and that is filming the dang video. This is a step in the process that I know a lot of you struggle with, including myself. But the one thing that I will say is that filming gets easier the more videos that you create. Even for me after four years, if I don't create a video for a while, I will always stumble and I will always take way longer than I normally would filming the video. And so repetition is what's really gonna help you get better with filming videos. At the same time, when it comes to filming strategy, I have used this one strategy for the last four years of me running my channel and it has worked extremely well for me and that is filming my videos in sections. I will never film a video all in one take because number one, I don't have my script memorized and number two, I find that to be really stressful. So what I do instead is I will record a few sections at a time and usually a few sections is about maybe five sentences or so and in between, once I stop recording, Recording, I can then reference my script. And like I said earlier on in this video, my script is usually nearby me on a laptop or on my phone. This allows me to do constant checkpoints on my script before I start filming. Another reason why I like doing it this way is when you film in sections, if you ever make a mistake, you can easily stop record and delete your previous clip without deleting the entire video. Not only this, when you're finished filming, you should have all the clips that likely would make it to the end version of your video, which makes it a lot easier for your video editor to string things together. Now the end result should look something like this with all of your clips clips for your video and that way when your editor is editing it's all about just stringing them together. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have a video editor, that's totally okay. This filming method is gonna save you time as well, especially if you're editing your own videos. I know for me, four years ago, when I didn't have a video editor, this strategy helped me so much because I knew in my SD card, all the clips were gonna make it to the final video, and I wasn't really combing through a bunch of footage that I wasn't actually going to use. And instead, a lot of my time editing was spent on editing out little minor mistakes, making the video more engaging with adding text, B-roll, and all of that. And so definitely try this method out and let me know in the comment section below if it helped you. All right, welcome to my office where all of the magic happens because after I'm done filming, the next thing I do is I sit on this chair right in front of this desk and I will upload my clips. Specifically, I will upload my clips to frame.io. I start up a folder and I label the folder with the video title and I start dropping the clips. Now, once that's done, I will go into our Slack channel where I communicate with my team and I will let my video editor know that the video is now ready for edit. From there, I wait maybe a couple of days and my video editor will ping me and let me know that the video is ready for review for the first draft. Now, you guys might be wondering, Vanessa, why do you use frame.io though? Well, it's because it's very helpful as a tool for the next step of our process, which is providing feedback. Once my video editor sends me the first draft, I will sit down and watch the entire video on frame.io. And sometimes I like to cheat by playing the video at 1.5 speed so that it goes along a lot faster. But essentially, I like to use frame.io because I'm able to drop my comments and it will actually timestamp them automatically. And so when my video 
editor is looking through my comments, she will see the exact section in the video that I would like to have changed. Now, usually throughout this process, I'm looking for typos. I'm looking for any additional text or B-roll I might want to add to the video. So for example, if I feel like I want to add a screen flow to the video like this, then what I'll do is I'll film the screen flow as I'm reviewing the video, and then I'll drop it in frame.io, take the link, and then embed it into my feedback. This way, all the clips are in one place and my video editor can easily access them, which will then reduce the amount of editing time that she needs to take. That being said, if you are someone who is working with a video editor for your videos, I highly, highly recommend using something like frame.io. It has absolutely sped up my workflow for YouTube drastically. And if you don't have a video editor yourself, I highly recommend checking out Upwork. My video editor was from Upwork and I've worked with other video editors that were from Upwork as well. And so never underestimate the power of Upwork. Now, in addition to me reviewing the first draft of the video, I also review the thumbnail as well, which my video editor typically drops in frame.io too. And from there, the video is ready to go. For us, it usually takes just one round of review, but usually in the beginning stages of working with a video editor, it may take a little bit more handholding and it may take a lot more rounds because you're still trying to get to know each other. You're still trying to learn how to communicate. But from my experience over time, after about three months, your video editor typically has a good idea about your style, about your preferences. And that is all thanks to you giving really great feedback from the get go. And so I highly recommend being a little bit more hands on in the process when you're first starting out and then eventually loosening down the reins. I've really gotten to a point where my video editor pretty much has the video 75% done and I'm just adding 25% of my magic to it to make the video fully complete. And so definitely remember to manage your expectations well when you're working with a video editor for the first time. Now, once the video and thumbnail are approved, it's basically ready for upload. And you might be wondering who uploads the video? Should it be me or should it be my video editor? I find that the best workflow is for the video editor to upload it to YouTube because likely they have the file ready to go and it's gonna be a lot easier for them to do it because it's already saved onto their computer versus if you do it, you're gonna need to download the video then re-upload it again and it just takes twice as much time. So I always get my video editor to upload the video and the thumbnail to YouTube. From there, once once she uploads the video as unlisted, I will now go in there and optimize the video. Now at this stage, you can either do it yourself or you can hire a social media manager or a virtual assistant to do it for you. Now you might be wondering, what does it look like to optimize a video? Well, for starters, I make sure that the title is exactly the title that I want for the video. And then I will head over to the cards and end screen section where I'll watch the video once more at 1.75 X speed to save me time. While I'm watching the video, I will not only add the cards, but if you are someone who wants to add chapters to your video, this is a really great time to do it because you're watching the video anyways, and you can have a notepad to the side where you're keeping track of all the timestamps so that you can add as chapters to your description later. Not only this, once I get to the end of the video, this is where I'll also choose my end screen. Now, if you are someone who wants to learn how to maximize your end screens and so many other strategies to grow your channel, I highly recommend you watch this video that I have right here where I break down a lot of different strategies on how you can get more views on your videos. Now, once my cards and end screens are done, the next thing that I'll head over to is my description. Now, here's a little hack for you that's gonna save you tons of time, and that is going to your Creator Studio, hitting the settings, and then going to Upload Defaults. Now you're able to paste a template for your description so that every single time that you're uploading your YouTube videos, that description will already be there. For me, every time I upload my videos, majority of the description is already done. This is where all my affiliate links are, all of my social links, and all the other things that typically don't change video to video. Now, what I will add to my description that's unique every single time is just a brief description of what my video is all about. And especially if I mention specific links in my videos, this is also the area where I'll upload those as well. So for example, in this video, I mentioned my Notion content planning dashboard, and I also mentioned my YouTube scripting for success faults, both of which are included in my description box below. Not only this, if you are someone who is adding chapters to your videos, this is also the area that you might want to paste those chapters into as well. 
Now, once I finish the description, the next thing that I'll check over is making sure that my video is linked to a playlist. How I optimize the homepage of my channel is that it's very playlist focused, meaning that if someone is interested in YouTube, here's all the videos about YouTube. If someone's interested in Instagram, here's all the videos about Instagram. So to me, it's really important that each video that I upload has a playlist that it belongs to. Now from there, once I've done optimizing the playlist, I will then move over to the keyword section. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is if you actually zoom in a little bit, Instagram tells you that keywords don't really make a difference on whether or not your videos rank. To me, it's very similar to hashtags for Instagram where it's a nice to have, but it's not really gonna be a game changer on whether or not your videos are gonna rank. And again, if you wanna learn how to rank your videos, make sure you watch this video up here where I share all my different strategies to do it. But anyways, how I choose my keywords is I usually use the TubeBuddy plugin and if you want a coupon code, here it is. But I will then start selecting different keywords that I feel speak to the video just to make sure that my video is fully optimized. Typically, if you're using TubeBuddy, TubeBuddy will already auto recommend different keywords for you to use. And sometimes it'll even give you a ranking on those keywords to tell you the probability of that keyword being a really great fit for your video. And so again, I like to definitely take the lazy route by just trusting TubeBuddy and not necessarily doing a bunch of keyword research because like I said, keywords don't actually make a difference to your YouTube strategy. Finally, once all those components are optimized, I will then go into my actual video and I will leave a pinned comment. Usually this is me asking for engagement in the comment section and I usually do a PS to direct people to a page that I want them to go to. This allows me to collect leads, allows me to make sales. So especially if you're a business owner, you definitely want to do this. And even if you're not a business owner, you want to protect your social media platform. If one day YouTube completely disappears, you want to be at least collecting emails so that you can stay in touch with your subscribers. And so once I've written that out, the next step is just simply pin that comment so that it's at the top of the page and so that it's top of mind for my viewers. And again, this goes back to why you wanna make sure your video is unlisted because if your video is private, I believe that you can't actually write a comment and pin it. And so that is why you wanna leave your video as unlisted when you are optimizing your video. Now at this point, once the optimization is all done for the video itself, it is now time to schedule it. And this is as simple as actually scheduling the video. Now, once you've scheduled the video, the next step of my process is to actually schedule the promotions for my video. Now, what I like to do is I like to copy the first section of my description where I've given a summary of what the video is about. And then I will head over to my community tab and paste the exact same description while also embedding a GIF of the video, a photo of the video, or even the thumbnail of the video. This allows me to actually schedule a post for my community and for anyone who has subscribed to me to let them know that a new video has now released. One of my favorite things about the community tab is that you can schedule these in advance, so definitely consider doing this so that your subscribers can stay up to date on your latest content. Other things that I like to schedule in advance when it comes to my YouTube promotions is to actually put out a teaser of my video or take a section of my video and turn that into an Instagram reel. As you can see from my Instagram profile, a lot of my Instagram reels are actually repurposed clips from my YouTube content. And so what I like to do is I like to use later media to schedule my Instagram reels in advance. Now, if you are someone who wants to schedule your reels in advance, then definitely check out this coupon code I have so that you can use later to do it for yourself as well. It'll save you tons of time and you won't have to worry about it the day of your upload. Now, depending on what provider you use for your link in bio on Instagram, some of them allow you to schedule your links in advance as well. So typically this is what we like to do too, is to already pre-schedule the links that are going to show up in my link in bio. Now, when it comes to the day of, of my video going live, I will manually promote my videos on my Instagram stories. And usually this is just me sharing a snippet of my video and maybe doing an Instagram story talking about why people should watch my video. Now, a little hack for you is you definitely wanna use this website called LinkTwin. When you use LinkTwin and you paste your YouTube video, you're gonna get a deep link. And when you actually embed this deep link into your Instagram stories, instead of people clicking on it and being sent to browser where they'll have to sign in in order to comment and subscribe, whereas when you use the link twin link, it's gonna direct people to the mobile version of YouTube where they can automatically subscribe and comment without any friction points. 
Now at this point of the video, I've really shared the entire A to Z of my YouTube process, but if you are someone who wants to supercharge the amount of views and watch time that you get on your videos, you definitely wanna watch this video that I have right here where I share additional strategies on how you can get more watch time. Remember, having more watch time is what dictates whether or not YouTube is gonna be pushing out your videos and how you can rank higher in the algorithm. So definitely check this video out next to supercharge your YouTube efforts. As always guys, I appreciate you and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.